Hello and welcome to another What's Inside. Today we are looking at careers. This is the revised edition from Parker Brothers. Two to six players, ages eight to adult. Of the Parker Brothers line, this is number 66, and this is the 1979 version. So this one was actually really popular, and I think this version stayed around for quite a while. Well into the 80s. So let's take a look at what we've got here. The instructions are not on the lid, so be aware of that. Now the board here has held up pretty well despite somebody writing on this copy. So just ignore that. And it is laid out a little bit like the Monopoly board. So you'll see you've got some stuff around the edges here. You start here and you go this way. And it's got corner pieces just like uh, Monopoly would. So instead of going to jail, you have unemployment, that sort of thing. But then it added these little zigzags around here, which are all, of course, going to help you in the game. So the boards held up really well. They made them to last back then. So you actually had an investment in the game. Nowadays, they're a lot cheaper most of the time, so you got to really watch the quality. But as always, you want to check the seam to make sure it's held up well and that it's not ripped. This one is, it feels like it's double seamed under there, but oh no. Yeah, black line there to help hold that together. So this is a nice quality board and the image sticker has stayed on really well. The seam has been reinforced, thankfully, so good job Parker Brothers. Alright, then we get into everything else. Okay, so here's some frequently asked questions this is not the main rules this is the errata for the rules probably just in the revised edition I haven't seen a copy of the earlier editions in a long time there was a 71 and I think a 76 version so here's the actual rule sheet and it is a fairly large piece of paper and it's just folded in half there's a lot of information on here don't let that be intimidating to you it's a pretty simple game and it just explains how to play, obviously. So let's take a look at the tokens and we'll see what we got. Okay, here we've got the money. It's in easy to understand denominations 50, 100, 500,000, 5,000, 10,000. And they're, of course, color coordinated 50 is purple, 100 is blue, 500 is lime green, sunshine yellow for the thousand, the 5,000 is orange and red is the 10,000. Now you'll notice some of these stacks are bigger than others. That's not me missing pieces. They actually tended to give you fewer of the 50 and 500 and the 5,000. The 10,000 is bigger. It's about double this and the 1,000 is the largest stack with, and the 100 is the next largest. This one has probably 40 of them and the others are pretty small as you can see there's not a lot to these so you'll want to make sure at least some of the money is representative um, it does have a specific there's the original backer board it does have a specific look to it but like I said there's not a whole lot of some of the bills the 50s and the uh, 500s are probably the smallest ones because there's not a lot of use for them in the game. But they'll give you kind of an idea of what the money looks like when you pick up the game. I actually only have one of these forms left. It's form number 66A. And this is actually your success formula. Fame plus money plus happiness equals... And it says careers at the top has your occupation record and the back is just a duplicate so you can use the form twice you'll need this to play the game for the most part you could get away without it I mean it's just kind of columns on a paper it can be replicated fairly easily if you're out or it doesn't come with the game but it's always nice to have the pieces that came with the game so be aware of this a lot of times these are gone completely more often than the money being missing in my experience with buying games. So that's the form. 
I only had one left in this copy, otherwise it's a complete copy because I do still have one. So let's look at the pieces next and see how those look. So these are your pieces, you got purple, red, yellow, blue, green, and white, which are the same colors and design as the clue pieces from this time. These were popular pieces, same type as the ones in Clue. So if these get lost, you can easily replace these. They still actually make these, as I recall. You can order them. They're probably made in China or something. But you can still find these pieces if you're missing them. And you do get two D6. They're regular small D6. And they roll great, as always. These were nice dice for the time, and they still hold up pretty well. I have a whole bunch of extras of these laying around because they roll great. So these are standard pieces for the time period, and you don't need to go back to that era to get these. You can always buy another game that has these pieces in it and replace them that way, or you could order them online. I think they still sell them on Amazon even, and you can get a big bag of them for like 10 bucks. So that's the tokens and the dice. Pretty straightforward stock material, but high quality as always. These do hold up really well. They look really good for their age. Great pieces to have. And it's always good to have some extras of these laying around because they are in so many games. So let's take a look at the cards next. Okay, these are the occupation cards. There's six of them. Two colleges, a science, business, physical education, and law. They're, these are just cheap cardboard, and they're nothing on the back even. So it's pretty easy to lose these or for these to get destroyed. They're not that high quality of cardstock. Unlike everything else, which is pretty decent quality, these are kind of cheap. And as you can see, they were punched out, so there's slight perforations on these, which means some of them are probably going to get torn or crumpled very easily. So be aware of that. A lot of times you'll see the edge lines don't quite make connection where they should when they were printed, so they're not going to be centered perfectly or anything like that. So that's these. Now let's take a look at the experience cards. And these are orange cards. And it's a pretty hefty stack of them. So let's take a look at those and see what we've got here. Alright, this is move two squares instead of rolling the die. And then a move three. These are kind of generic looking. And lastly, so there's about 28 cards here. I counted 28. I believe that is all that is in the set. So it, it doesn't really tell you how many cards there are, but I believe this is complete. So they're kind of generic looking. There's nothing spicy here. No, no added like flair to it. It's just standard type, which is kind of lazy, but the game is pretty fun. So. For a game from the time period, these aren't that bad. And they're pretty decent card stock. They're okay. Uh, this side, like I said, they look a little generic, but, you know, what are you going to do, right? Alright, let's take a look at the Opportunity Knox deck. And these are purple with black, so let's see what we've got here. 
opportunity to enter college. You notice that these are off center. <laughs> so, uh, kind of cutting some corners here, Parker Brothers. And finally, again, there's 28 cards in this deck as well. And you'll notice there are some duplicates or ones that are very similar. So there is a pattern to the game and it can be a little predictable if you have a lot of people and you've played a lot. But it's not a bad game. And the cards are held up pretty well considering their age. Yeah, they look a little simplistic by today's standards. But back then, it really wasn't that unheard of to see games like this that were just a little simplistic because adding the extra flair really would have cost more money. So that's all the pieces inside. So that is what is inside the 1979 version of Careers, the revised edition for two to six players ages eight to adult. You might get by with playing with some younger people you know playing this game but I think teenagers aren't going to enjoy it uh, because it's very dated in a lot of respects. So it might be more for adults and younger kids. It's a pretty simplistic game in most respects and they probably would do fairly well re-releasing this updated so you have like internet stuff but I don't know. I think uh, if you're nostalgic for the game, you'll enjoy it. But I don't think younger people that are like, yeah, between 12 and 25 are going to like this. Unless they're real big into nostalgia stuff or, you know, hipsters or something like that. But it's a classic game that has a lot of love from a lot of people because a lot of us played it. I think it's a decent game. It's just one that's not going to be for everyone, and unless you've played it as a kid, you're probably not going to have a lot of love for it. And getting younger people to play it's going to be like pulling teeth. But little kids would probably be okay with it. 8 to 10, they'll probably be okay playing. So it might be a little more challenging for them, but I don't think it'd be a big deal. So we've seen what's inside. I told you, I think it's a pretty decent game. It's held up very well. It is a pretty pretty decent quality for its time game and uh, I would recommend it so I, I just think like I said the age demographic really is going to make a difference on whether or not somebody's going to want to play it with you but for adding it to your board game collection it's a pretty decent addition if you have nostalgia for it but that's going to do it for this one as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future reviews. If you want to help the channel in other ways, links are in the description and on the about page. And as always, we hope to see you on the next one.